One of the things I hear all the time from designers is that they don't want to shoot video because they are afraid to get on camera. So if you are one of those people who is struggling with camera competence, you are going to love the show today. I'm Tracy Matthews. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy. I help jewelry designers and makers create financial security with their businesses for, their, for themselves and their families using a little thing that I call the desire brand effect. On today's show, I'm gonna be sharing with you or chatting with actually Patrice Holzer, who is going to share with you everything that you need to know about creating confidence and showing up on video in your business. Now, the reason why this episode is so important and you need to listen to Patrice is she is a master. She comes from, she worked as a producer on the Today Show and she has been working on with big brands creating video and she's now dialed in her strategy into simple, tangible ways to help you build more confidence and show up on video. Because we do know one thing, video is king. I'm gonna dive into the episode in just a moment, but if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and you share this video with your friends. All right, let's dive in to this episode with Patrice. I am so excited to have my new friend, Patrice Holzer on the show today. Patrice, welcome. Welcome. I am so pumped to be here. Okay. This, well, so you're a video expert and we're going to talk about this, but we just found out something super funny uh, right before we hit record is that we are both born on May 21st. We are Gemini's. So <laughs> God help all the people around us. <laughs> we're birthday twins, which is the best thing to be. We're super excited. So I am so excited to have you here. I actually met you on Clubhouse. My friend Sabina Hitchin was hosting a PR room. You were up on stage talking about video. I asked a question about um, how, like suggestions on how to promote some stuff that we were doing over here with our BIPOC scholarship. And uh, I'm like, I need to interview you for the podcast. You had so many, so much, you dropped so much value on Clubhouse that I just needed to have you here. <laughs> Yeah, I love how you're using the clubhouse lingo. Should we reset the room? Yeah, pull to refresh, please. And you're going to see, raise your hand, ask a question. Uh, and please start the question with, my question is, we don't need the back 60 seconds or less, and then say you're done speaking. Okay. <laughs> so if you're not on clubhouse, you probably don't get these inside jokes. And you should definitely join uh, at the time that we're recording this video uh, in this audio, actually for the podcast and for YouTube a clubhouse is only on iPhone. So if you don't have an iPhone or an iPad, you won't be able to join us until they open up the app to the, in the Google Play Store. However, uh, down the road, you'll be able to join. And if, you're, if you want to get on the wait list or DM me for an invite, because I have a bunch of extra invites and Clubhouse is amazing. We're doing weekly rooms on Clubhouse for jewelry designers on Mondays and uh, many other rooms that I participate in. So it's super fun. So Patrice... You're a video expert. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I will do cliff notes. So <laughs> briefly, I come from old school journalism. So I was at the Today Show for seven years as a producer uh, and a digital creator. So I was working with a lot of the talent at the show. And then I was also in the field shooting video, editing video, uh, and repurposing it for the digital platforms at NBC and the Today Show. Um, Prior to that, I did some stints at CNN. I was at Bloomberg TV as the overnight Asian market producer, wow. which was, I should not have had that job. That is a <laughs> totally different story. I'm like, I don't, my first day at work, I was literally Googling what is a bond. I'm like, this is awful. But anyway, <laughs> so that was kind of like my first job into New York and I, you know, you have to start somewhere. So um, moved my way up. And then at the end of 2016, I ended up uh, going to a startup. It was like, quote unquote, my dream job. My boss at the Today Show gave me a blessing. He's like, get out of here. People die at the Today Show. I mean, it's a great job. It's a great place to be. But, you know, you, you get in that comfort, cozy bubble, right? Where you kind of think like you can't do anything else. And I, I you just don't really leave. And so my boss is like, get out now or you're going to be here for the next like 30 years. So I ended up leaving the show and I was at this startup and the startup was not it's probably very typical of a lot of stories where you think it's like a dream and it was just an awful awful place to be so I kind of found myself a couple months later uh jobless um I had the health insurance at the time I just had a newborn and I had a toddler and my husband had left his corporate job to go start something on his own and I was like the person so I was in this really 
very nerve wracking place in New York city, uh, not a cheap place to be. And, um, I kind of had these two at, at the top, at the end of 2016, 2016, my boss was like, well, you can come back to the show. And I'm like, Oh, that just feels so lame. Yeah. The startup job didn't work. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just make a video. I had no plan, but I'm like, you know what, when I was at the today show, I worked with so many companies and brands and small businesses that would be on the show. And most of the time people don't have on TV or on camera experience. Yeah. And so I was working a lot with these founders or these marketing people, and they didn't often know what the best elements of their story was. So I'm like, you know what, businesses need help telling stories better on video. So I'm going to do that. So that's what I did. And I'm four years later, I'm still here. So I work with brands, big and small, and I have a team of journalists and we create video for these companies, campaigns, social media, founder video, ads, investor pitches, you name it. And then I also, and then I'll stop, but the other side of my business is um, not everyone can afford to outsource video production. It's expensive. Yeah. And so I started kind of wearing on me because I'd have all these like solopreneurs and young, not young in age, but like young founders starting their companies and being like, I need your help. And I li- couldn't help them. Cause I'm like, I, I can't make the margins work and or I'd be paying for your video. So I'm like, you know what, there needs to be something more for these people. So I started developing courses and digital programs last year that is especially for solopreneurs, small business owners that can't afford to outsource production, but you need video in your marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. So now I help them through my courses, which is super fulfilling. So that That is, is, that's what I do. (laughs) We'll talk about those later too, which is amazing. So I love that. Okay. So you, you mentioned that you work with big brands, you're working with all types of people. What are some of the strategies that people can pull from big brands or ideas that they can use in their video strategy? Well, this is kind of interesting. Um, and I think will be like a comfort to a lot of small brands and solopreneurs is that actually the big brands look to the influencers a lot to see what they're doing Mm -hmm. in the social spaces. Yes, because Mm -hmm. quite often the only difference between a big brand and let's say a solo person who has a rock and loyal community of avid, rabid fans on social media is just budget. Big brands can have a marketing team, right? And small brands, they often don't. They're more on the ground. They're often the ones that are in the weeds Mm -hmm. talking directly to their customer where the bigger you get as a brand, the more removed you actually get away from your consumer. So when I'm working with bigger brands, they're often asking me like, what is, what's happening in the Instagram influencer world? What's happening like on the ground? Because they want to be able to take a lot of those practices. And so, and I, so I I guess to, to answer your question more, you know, the big brands are trying to fi- figure out what works for them in the same way that a solopreneur is trying to figure out what works for them on video. They often don't know. They just have the money to experiment a little bit more and to try different types of content and see what sticks. Whereas a solopreneur and a small business, they don't have the luxury of, of like spending those dollars. You know, what's really interesting is that I'm always like, when, especially when we talk about email marketing and other things like that, I'm like, take a look at what these big brands are doing and see what works on you. And then mirror that for yourself. Because a lot of times people overthink who their ideal customers are. And a lot of times they're just a lot, they're very similar types of people to who we are. Um, I say to the jewelry designers sometimes that sometimes they might have like bigger pockets or something, because you definitely want to be working with people with money. But at the end of the day, their um, responses are probably going to be similar to you because if they resonate with your brand, it'll be similar. Do you- yeah, no, absolutely. And you know what the interesting thing is too, you just trigger something is I'm working with a client now and we did all this high-end content for them. And then we also did like rough and dirty content where we literally yeah. just asked some of their users to send in footage from their phones. And then we just put their branding on it, you know, to make it look a bit more elevated, that stuff is outperforming the beautiful DSLR multi-cam drone footage that we shot. And it's, they're now using the raw and dirty footage in their ads and not the high expensive footage. So it's really, you you know, now that is not always the case. Like there are, there are specific 
I can, I can qu quote a different example where the opposite has been true, but it's exciting because for the first time ever in this video landscape, everything is democratized. Like back in the day when I was at the Today Show, if you didn't know how to operate a camera, if you didn't know have have access to expensive editing equipment, if you didn't know, like, if you weren't skilled videographer person, then you couldn't do video or you had to pay a buttload of money to like yeah. hire someone. Now it's like, I mean, my, my, my seven-year-old like knows how to edit video on my yeah. phone. I, it's like, he's doing this at seven. So it's just unbelievable the amount of power and empowerment that all these small business owners now have in their hand that they can make content that outperforms these brands like Lululemon and, and Amazon. It's really, it's really amazing. It's so true though. You know, it's funny because in our strategy, we stopped doing like highly polished video a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, and, and at the beginning of COVID, you couldn't even really be in the same room with someone. So like a video editor couldn't even come or a video uh, a photographer, videographer couldn't come and like shoot our videos. So I'm doing, my boyfriend was setting up his camera, like certain things he wants to look good if they're for programs and stuff like that. But, totally. like, all of our ads are like me holding the camera <laughs> like this. You know no. what I mean? Like holding the camera like this, like taking a picture. You are you taking a picture of me doing? I'm that? taking a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, you got it. You know, holding the camera like this. That is content here. Yeah. Um, just to you know get something up because something something was better than nothing, especially this last year. And I think people appreciate that. I mean, you're filming in a remote place. It's not even your normal environment. You told me before that you're like in LA right now, and you're usually in New York City. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and you know what, and so the business, my business personally has changed so much because a year ago, I mean, all of my, which is why I pivoted. I mean, it was all right. Part of the reason, because all of my shoots came to a grinding halt. Um, you know, we couldn't shoot and that's really scary. Like I don't get paid. I can't pay my team unless I'm, you know, yeah. constantly doing these video shoots and most, and all the shoots that we were doing, you know, you're doing strategy, but then you're executing on that strategy for these clients. And so last year was such a huge year for me because I'm like, ah, this isn't going to work. And then I was like, you know what? I'm actually tired of turning away other people anyway that can't afford me. Like, that's ridiculous. They actually need need my help more than some of these brands. So it's, it, it is exciting. And that just it, as long as and we can probably get into this, but, you know, video production is, is actually quite simple, but people tend to overcomplicate the mm -hmm. system. Um, but it really just boils down to, you know, cons consistency um and in and having a really strong message and understanding your client so it's like marketing basics yep. at the end of the day yeah yep. and i love video in general just it's like one of my forms i you you probably don't believe me looking at my personal instagram but like yeah. no what are you you're looking at your background i mean I, i'm like so embarrassed i'm a video person and i'm like i just moved this plant like it wasn't even i'm like i gotta get a plant back here you know my sister's redoing her place so she's waiting with there's like you know she's getting art but she's not there yet i'm like oh my god tracy's background looks so beautiful like, get the plant get the plant <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. We just, uh, we have to do what, what we can in this house. You know, this, this home doesn't have great acoustics for video because it echoes a lot. So, um, a lot of stone. So we do what we can, you know, you just got to do what you can at, at this day and age. Yes. So I want to get back like onto strategy. Like, what is it, what would you recommend? Like, what's a good long-term strategy for brands that for an e-commerce brand who's trying to like shoot more video and use that as part of their strategy. I mean, especially now that Instagram came out and said that reels is going to be super important. Reels and IGTV are going to be the preferred method. Yeah. You know, it, we're seeing a big resurgence in IGTV. So IGTV has been out for a long time. Yeah. Like IGTV is not new, but for some reason it just never really picked up the steam that Instagram thought it would, but mm -hmm. because of clubhouse yep. and, 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 you know, and Instagram is highly benefiting from clubhouse because really the only way to continue these conversations offline yep. is really through Instagram. I mean, you can do it Twitter, but for the most part, it's been Instagram. And so it's, what's happening is, is now all these conversations on clubhouse are now being percolated at a micro, a more of a micro level on Instagram. And they're going to Instagram lives and Instagram mm -hmm. live just released a new feature about two weeks ago, where you now can essentially have a roundhouse discussion in an Instagram live. So you can have three or four people in one live. So if you're hosting a show, you can, before you could only do one. Yeah. So 
it's, you know, so Instagram lives are actually kind of coming, they're having a resurgence in that a lot more people are using them and they're getting more engagement. Um, and then reels has just been, I mean, since reels came out, it has just been the preferred way that Instagram wants you to use their platform. And so yes, Instagram reels, Instagram reels is if you want to, if you're looking to grow your account, especially as an e-commerce person, or you're a product person, the more focus that you can put your energy, like stop posting static posts and take that time that you're devoting to the content marketing for static posts and, and, and devote that to reels and do it for a month and, and see where you land. And I'm willing to bet that that product person is going to see a surge in growth if they just shifted some of their energy and their time into making reels as opposed to other marketing channels or other marketing yeah, platforms. Okay. So, and, and by shooting reels, you don't have to dance and point your finger around the screen, which is like, okay, I feel no. so silly doing that. I'm like, I'm, I'm not 12. And I was, no. So I felt so good. Cause I was in a room. I was like one of the moderators in a room on clubhouse a couple of um, days ago. And Sue Zimmerman, who's like an Instagram expert. Oh, yeah. I know Sue Zimmerman. She's, she's a powerhouse. Yeah. I've known her for years. We, we like ran like met, like started our businesses right around the same time. And she was saying like, okay, guys, let's face it. If you're over 40, like do not dance in a video and point around the screen. I was like, I'm almost 50. So <laughs> we're doing it a little bit, but I'm trying to find other ways to use a reel. So what are some good ideas? You know, there's this misnomer that if you're not pointing you're not dancing, you're not using like funny sound effects, then, you know, you, you can't be on those platforms, but actually um, what we're seeing too is even in TikTok, the content that is having now TikTok is still by and large, like funny content, funny videos, mm -hmm. and a lot of that like humor, but the biggest area of growth on TikTok is how to an educational content. I have a girl that wow. I, um, and, and this is kind of a little story that's, that that's relevant. Um, there was an Instagram account that I was following about two years ago and it was brilliant. And I loved, it was, it was called smarter in a sack. And it's basically like all this content was like, we want to make you the smartest person at the dinner party. Right. So I would follow this content and it was brilliant. And I didn't know who did it. There was no picture. There was no videos. There wasn't even like a bio of like, hi, I'm the person that runs this account. So one day I, I DM this per this person. I'm like, your account is so good. I'm dying to know. Are you a brand? Are you a company? Are you an individual? Like, give, who are you? And she was this young girl that was has a day job, and she just did this on the side. I'm like, you got to get yourself on video. This is brilliant, and it's yeah. so different. And so she started like following my Instagram. I I I, I did uh, dish out a lot of like video tips and stuff on my account, and she told me that, you know, after following my account for a while, she's like, I got the courage, she started going on video. Well, she started going on TikTok, but she started going on TikTok as herself and teaching people about what she was teaching. She now is, she's gone viral like a million times. She is one of their special content creators on TikTok. And she has a, a side business, a complete side business where she's looking to possibly leave her day job because of video and because of showing up on Instagram and TikTok as herself no dancing. She's not the dancey type and she's young. She's like 27, but she's like, I don't, I don't do that stuff. That's not my style. So it's really amazing. Like showing up right now, like who you are and your personality, whether you're, you know, extroverted, introverted, shy, you know, not shy. Like that is what is attractive because that you will then in tune attract the people that want to follow you. That that's such a good point. And I, I love what you said about that. And I think that th people just get like so intimidated because they feel like they have to be like amazing dancers to do these like reels type videos or no silly things where you feel stupid. No. And you know what my biggest, one of my biggest tips for people that are kind of nervous to kind of rip that video bandaid is if you're on Instagram or take your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, whatever your social platform is, right. Pick out the top five posts in the last year that did really well, whether it was comments, likes, shares, or, or just posts that you really like writing, turn that into a reel. Like you've already done the work, right? Like that's how I do most of my reels. I just go into the Instagram insights and I look, okay, the past six months, what had the most comments or the mm -hmm. most shares? I usually like to do shares because to me, if someone's sharing it, it means like, oh, well, that's resonating very powerfully. So I just turn all my highest shared Instagram posts that are static into reels. And because you've already written most of the caption, you have a baseline script. 
you now just need to pull out the nuggets and make it shorter so it fits in that to that 15, you know, to 30 second second. thing. Yeah. But don't rethink like, and that's, I think people get so like, I don't know what to do. And uh, it's like, no, you probably have already done the work or, you know, if you have a blog, like what blog, what are your top five blog posts? Great. Those are your reels. And honestly, you, you can take the same real content or like the same topic. And what's the saying? Like you can slice something a million different ways. I mean, I, I talk a lot about camera confidence. I have like five reels on camera confidence. I'm kind of saying the same thing, but I'm taking like a different angle from it or yeah. I'm taking like, and it's like the same message. So that type of, and actually that type of stuff is good because then you're hammering, you're aligning yourself like in a lane and you're niching the niches are in the riches, right? Like you're, yeah. you're, you're being a lot more intentional and focused. And so people are going to start coming to your account then because they know they're going to learn about camera confidence and, and that's what they want to learn. So I think a, a good thing too, because this is kind of like a strategy to rip off the bandaid and you might have some more, which I'm going to ask you mm-hmm. shortly, but like you could, for people who are designing or making a physical product like jewelry, yes. you can literally just take even some images and use some of the editing tools on reels to talk about the process or the details or some of the things that the types of pieces that you design to create interest, right? That's the thing. I think a lot of times product businesses are like, well, first of all, number one, um, what I always say to product businesses, and first of all, what you said, yes. <laughs> Especially if you're kind of, you just getting your sea legs and you're a little bit nervous to maybe show your face or you're a little bit nervous to kind of like, you know, put yourself out there, start baby steps, dip your toe in the pool, like do exactly that. Like people want to be taken behind. People want to know where people work. People want to know what their office looks like now. Like it's the same thing. I recently had a a bunch of jewelry, two of my most recent students. I I do, I run masterminds a couple of times a year um, for video storytelling. And I had a jewelry designer and she has beautiful stuff. And then you go through her page and I'm like, how, how do you make this into a leaf? Like this, how do you do that? And so I go, just put your phone up and just it was like one of her best performing Mm -hmm. videos because, you know, people want to understand like how to do something. And so now she's finally getting to the point where now she's showing her face, but she needed to kind of like do that first. And then also the other thing about product videos is that just because you're a product doesn't mean you should not be showing up as well. You know, I mean, whatever, like, you know, B to C, D to C, it's like, you know, it's like human to human, like people buy from humans. And especially when it comes with like jewelry, it's so such a personal purchase that like, I have a perfect example right now. Like I just had, I just had my third kid a couple months ago and you know, I, I, I'm so basic, but I'm like, I want a letter necklace. I don't have a letter necklace for my children. And I want letter necklace. There are a million options for letter necklaces. It's like, I'm overwhelmed. So right now I'm literally like trying to figure out who, who, I want to buy it from because I have so many options. So it's not even like the necklace, but like look, that's going to make me decide. It's actually like, I'm deciding between a couple of girls that do it on Instagram now. And I think I know, cause I like connect with her more than other people, but that's the person, you know? Exactly. You're probably going to get a ton of mess- direct messages now on Instagram about letter necklaces. <laughs> I still don't have it. I'm so paralyzed. I'm like, I it's like not even a big decision. Like, I'm like, I I'll get you like 30 people post. today. I'll just like cut this clip, <laughs> put it posted on my stories. You'll get the DMs. <laughs> oh my God. I need letter necklace. God. But, I, but it just reminds me. I'm like, oh my God. And some of these jewelry makers don't put um, themselves on their pages. And I'm like, next swipe. Like I want to see the human, you know? Exactly. Exactly. That's so true, which is like okay. such a great thing to say. So we talked about ripping off the bandaid now, and you, then you mentioned like coming out from behind the scenes, showing your face. So how do you, how would you recommend, or like, what are some concrete tips to build more camera confidence to just like show up and I don't know, just do it, I guess. Okay. Um, so hold something in the video. I mean, I can give you like really basic ones. So, I mean, there's kind of like you know, high level camera tips and then like little ones. So if we're talking like, all right, if you're already on camera and you know, you're doing it, but you're still nervous, some ways to get grounded is to hold something. Like even when I would be working with reporters at the today show or anchors quite often. um, And these are more for the new ones, but like if they're going live, they're usually holding, you know, yes, they're holding a notebook because that's kind of 
what you associate with, but quite often just the act of groundedness of having something physical in your hand, because your hands can be really awkward. People don't know what to do with them. So they tend to like either be super awkward and not move them at all, which is awkward. Yeah. Um, or they like, or they do, move they them do this too thing. much. I do this a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's okay though. But like, or they move them too much when they're flailing, you know what I mean? And a lot, a lot of times reporters were in these situations where it's like, you need to like be authoritative. So holding something. So it could be like a mug, especially if you're a jewelry designer, you know, it could even be like holding like a tool if it makes sense and you're going to talk about it. So holding something in your hand grounds you standing up like, um, you know, whenever I teach my mastermind classes, I have a, I stand like all the time. I can do it live because there is something about your energy. So if you're going to record a video, um, stand, um, you automatically, um, will, your voice will become more, more confident. The other thing is the camera dulls everything. So the camera dulls how you look, the camera dulls how you sound, and the camera dulls your energy. So you might think you're at like a 10. I, I want, I need you to go to a 12 because the 12 is actually going to be where you're at. So even like, it's so funny whenever I record videos at home, my poor family, they're like, and I live in a New York apartment. They're like, oh God, I'm, they're like, you're screaming. I'm like, the camera is dulling me. I am not screaming. <laughs> but sure enough, like you watch the video, and I just look mildly energetic, mildly. But if you were to see me record it, you would be like, what is, who is this chick? She's yeah. crazy. So always go a little bit on, more on the volume level that you're even comfortable with. And I promise you that's going to come across better in terms of more of like a bigger picture. Okay. Every single person that you see who is doing really well on video right now, they did not start that way. Yeah. And every person um, who is good on video practices a lot. It's like everything. I mean, even, I mean, if you turn on the today, I don't mean to keep talking about the today show, but it's just what I know. Like, you know, when, when Hoda and Kathy would go live and they did their little intro, they were, they practiced that hello intro probably three times before they went live. And this is professionals that do this literally every day and are at the top of their craft. They still practiced before they said, hello, good morning, and welcome. They practice that. So yeah. I think people are like, oh, let's just get the camera and I'm just going to freestyle. It's like, no, like that's not how professionals do it. The best people that you see, they're prepared, they plan, they practice, because when you feel prepared, that's why you're more confident. It's when you are like deer in headlights and you're winging it and you're just sort of like, I need to do video, I need to do video, I need to do video but you don't really have a nice plan. Like that's usually when the videos don't come out great. And also like, if you're like trying to squeeze it in between meetings and you're like, <laughs> this happens to me all the time. I get yeah, a, I mean, and I'm like trying to memorize it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And then I do it like 30 times. And I'm like, I'm swearing at myself behind the scenes. And I'm like, well, maybe if you just like read through it three times, you would actually know what it was supposed to say instead of you trying to like memorize it while you're doing it. Um, no, absolutely. another tip too is people forget, like you can splice separate sections together. A little tip that I learned about it's, it's easier to just shoot it in one take if you know what you're talking about, but a little tip I knew I learned about if you wanted to do something more scripted, which might not be something that jewelry designers need to do is you can set your camera up in three different locations, learn the one section, and then you could just cut those three pieces together so that it looks like almost like a more like real no. professional edited video. You just hit such a great tip movement. So one of the biggest things too, is like, okay, making a video is one thing, but making an interesting video and a video that people want to watch, that's a whole other thing. So just doing the video, unfortunately, isn't good enough because you want, if you're going to put in that time and effort into making video, make it watchable. So one of a really quick, easy tip is just what you said is even if you're in the same room, you know, and, and I know this is not a video podcast, but I'm going to do the motion. I mean, it's like, you know, just switch, switch your background. You know, you go here yeah. and here you can say the three different lines. And all of a sudden it seems like you're in different places. P people, the, it's a feedback loop in your brain. So when you're changing locations or you're walking instinctively, people are like, what happens next? So e even in my reels, if they're 15 seconds, I'm often in four or five different places in the span of 15 seconds places in my New York apartment is like, I'm taking two steps to the left. And then I take yep. one step, right. But it's like a whole new world. And that little trick alone will keep in people's engagement a little bit higher, a little bit longer. You know, it's really interesting in my, my former apartment in New York, my old apartment, 
Um, and I'm going to be setting up a similar type of apartment here in Arizona, like literally for the sole purpose of working and shooting videos, because like we create so much content for flourish and thrive. But like one of the tricks we did is like, I had, had a TV that didn't look like a TV. It had, uh, it was like one of those frames it had, um, a zebra on it. So I could, that could be a background. I had a wall with like gems on it. That could be the background. I had my regular background with, which had like more of a thing like this. Then I had the painting that I, that I designed <laughs> as another background. So there's like five different ways that I could literally turn that weren't backlighting myself with the windows that like, that's how, you know, you're a content creator is like, you literally are like talking about your home in terms of video backgrounds. I love that. You're like, I have five backgrounds in my apartment. Like you, you're, you've done this. <laughs> yeah. That's why you have to do it. Yeah. That's, I mean, you got to, when it, when it comes down to that. So we're going to wrap up soon, but I wanted to ask you real quickly, what are some writing tips to kind of get things off the ground? And you kind of talked about like pulling things from Instagram previously. Do you have any other tips to just like quickly create? Yeah. Something? Um, okay. Unscripted, so, scripted content. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I script everything. I script everything. Even if I'm doing a 15 second reel, I have a notebook and I jot down exactly what I'm saying and I jot down what I'm shooting. So, um, if you're not scripting in some way, you're probably not making good video. Okay. Um, in terms of writing tips, you know, writing for video is different than writing a blog, writing a newsletter, you know, writing, you yeah. know, video, sh video is short form. So you always, I, I always keep this in the back of my brain. 75 words is around 30 seconds. 75 words is not a lot of, of it's not a lot of words. When you start That's like writing, a bio. It, it's like a bio. A short so bio. Exactly, and, 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 and I won't even freak people more, you know, not to get into the data, but most people like don't even get to 30 seconds. So you got to think oh my God, like you have 50 words maybe to tell your story. And even if you're making a 15 second video, it still needs to be a story. There needs to be kind of a, a beginning, a middle and an end. So some quick tips I have is 75 words. So just keep that in mind. So just, you know, if you kind of structure yourself and give yourself boundaries, you're going to be forced to only use words that matter. You do not have time to waste by putting in the literally, actually, uh, you know, you're introducing yourself at the start. You don't have time for that. No one cares. Wham, bam, get straight to the point, you know, like right off the bat. Um, another tip I have is you lose the most people within the first seven seconds of video. So the first seven seconds of video is actually the most important part of your video. So, uh, you want to start out strong. So it's called, and I know this is not, maybe it is new, new for some people, but it's called the hook. And there's lots of different ways to hook in people an easy way. So by holding something and someone in your hand, that's kind of a prop hook. If you're holding something off the top, people are like, Oh wait, what are they doing? So that's like one way to kind of like hook in someone um, asking a question right off the top of your video is another really great way, to, especially if you're speaking very clearly to your audience, you know, do you get overwhelmed when you try to make a video, you know, like that could be like my opening hook. And if I'm speaking to that person, they're gonna be like, Oh my God, yes. I want to know what this girl has to say. Um, another writing tip is, um, using the word replace. I, you know, video is funny, right? Because it's you and your voice and your face. And so in a way, the video is about you because it's you, but the videos that do best and the people that have the most loyal fans, their videos are nothing to do with the person in the video. It's always about your person and your audience. And it's always about helping them. So anytime you want to use, I replace it with you. And it's amazing. You can make it work. So, you know, don't say like, you know, I, you know, I was overwhelmed, you know, do you get overwhelmed? Like, you know, mm -hmm. with video, you know, I like, there's something about I too, that people tune out. So use the word you more frequently. And that's another way to kind of like hook in someone. I think like for people for, especially for those super short form videos, right. I think you can explain, like, let's say you feel, you might feel overwhelmed on video. Like I'm going to share with you, whatever your hook was like, do you feel overwhelmed on video? You, you can relate it to yourself so that there's a way if it's a longer format to share. I think what I'm trying to say here is like, let's say you're doing a five minute video for like YouTube, right? Yes. Yes. It's more an instructional, longer video. So we're talking about Instagram videos or short, like 75 second videos. So yeah. in that longer form video, you can share like a one minute story about an experience that you had or someone else had 
to kind of bring it into your experience so that you can show people that you understand what they're talking about and then bring it back to them because it's really about the purpose of any content that you do is about the person listening to it. And that's, that's, I just want to clarify for our listeners. That's what, what you mean, right? No, absolutely. And, and, and honestly, working at the Today Show for seven years, you know, you write all your scripts and quite often, you know, you're given an assignment. And sometimes I was told you have 20 minutes to get this to air. You need to write oh a 60 second story. And, six, and, and also they won't put it to air if it's absolute shit. So you start to develop these tools of like, you, what is going to make an audience not turn the channel? So it's the same type. It's just the channel is now social media and attention, right? Because there's so many different So what is going to keep someone on your platform or where you are? And you're absolutely right. YouTube videos are a bit different. You know, the YouTube audience, though, is very different than the Instagram audience. Yeah. So if you I always tell people, if you're starting to get into video, do not jump into YouTube first <laughs> because YouTube requires the most loyalty. And if you don't give it requires loyalty because you are rewarded in longer attention. So the average watch time on someone on YouTube is like three times as long as any other platform. That is powerful. Yeah. But you need to be totally consistent. Like you need to be pumping out that type of video now. Like whatever you say you're going to do, you have to do it. And YouTube video is harder because the quality um, production standards are just higher because you have all these professional YouTubers that do it for a living and they're using the Sony's and the Canon's and the DSLRs and they're doing the, the it's produ it's like highly produced video, right? So if you don't really know how you're going to use video yet for your business, do not start out with YouTube. Amazing. Uh, Patrice, this is such a great interview. Like it lasted so long. I'm like, we might have to cut this into I thought we could talk to you for five more hours. What are you talking about? I know. We could just keep going. You could tell us like your whole thing. Really over? But where can where can people find you and learn a little bit more about your program and all the things? Yeah. So honestly, Instagram is the best way. Um my handle is at Patrice Holzer and um, you know, I have a few ways to work with me. I, I give out lots of free content on my Instagram all the time in stories and in posts. I'm also on Clubhouse twice a week talking about video storytelling every Tuesday, every Thursday and Friday. Uh, so that's the free way, right? Um, I have a, a, a low level program that's a really great intro to video. It's DIY. It's using the process that I use on the Netflixes and the Lululemons and the Parsley Helds and the Amazon um, and the Legos that we work with. I take that process and I share that with people, how they can apply it to their own business. So that is also the information is on my Instagram for that. And then three times a year, I uh, run masterminds and it's live and you get me live and it's a total immersion in video strategy with your social media. So I partner with a social media expert and we get everyone's account into tip top shape. And because it, here's the thing, it's really hard to have a really good video strategy if you do not have at least one social media platform that aligns. So yeah. if it's Instagram, your Instagram has to look and be a certain way in order for that video content to grow and have the, the, the biggest chance. Um, so I run mastermind. I'm running another mastermind in, I don't in April, I don't know when this is airing, but um, in April, and then I'll probably run another one again in the fall. Um, so yeah, lots of different ways. I love it. Well, Patrice, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad that we met on Clubhouse and I'll see you in the club. Another I know, I, you're like my birthday twin. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta meet up for a birthday. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for listening to the show today and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed everything that Patrice had to say. Make sure that you go follow her on social media. She's amazing and a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy everything that she said. Now, in the comments below, I would love for you to share with me one strategy or tip that you learned from this video today and share how you're going to implement it. I'm so looking forward to hearing and reading your comments and actually chatting with you as well. Thanks so much for listening today. This is Tracy signing off.